Hey folks, welcome to this video where we are going to set up Apache Spark using Docker Compose. Just keep in mind that we're not going to go into lots of detail about what Apache Spark is or why you might use it. We're not going to go into lots of detail about how you'd use it in a production environment or set it up for production. This is really just a local setup for you to have a play and run some queries and that kind of thing. Okay, let's jump straight in. So if you've watched some of my other videos, you've seen some of my other content, you know that I quite like using the Docker images that you get from Bitnami. They're quite well maintained. So we're just going to go ahead and search for that now. Okay, let's hit these first couple of links. Okay, and you can see here that there are commands that you can use, a curl command you can use to fetch the Docker Compose file that you need. And then it also gives you the command to start Docker Compose. Now we're just going to jump to a terminal window and have a look. I'm not going to download it because I've already got it downloaded. Let's go and take a look. Okay, here we are in iTerm, which is just a fancy terminal. Your normal terminal on your Mac should do absolutely fine. And we're in a directory where I've got a bunch of stuff already downloaded. Okay, now in order to follow along, you'll need to run the command that we saw on the Bitnami page earlier, which is this command here. We're not going to run that because, as I said, we've already run this command. So we've got the Docker Compose file there. And the other thing we've done here is that we've downloaded Apache Spark as well. You don't actually need to do that. That's just an extra step that I've done just to show you how you can use the terminal from your Spark installation as well as the Spark shell inside the Docker Compose setup. So if you want to download this, you can just download this by Googling and then going to this website here and then hitting download and you can just select, say, that one there. When you download that, you get a TGZ file. And the way to unzip that file is to say tar minus XVZF and then the name of the file. So like that, for example, uh, dot TGZ, right? So that would untar that file. And then you'd end up with this kind of folder here. OK, so I'm not going to run that because, again, I've already run that before. So let's just clear that. OK, so I've made a slight edit to the Docker file that we've downloaded, so I'll just show you that now. So if I just vi that Docker file, you can open it in any text editor, it doesn't have to be vi. And you scroll down here, these lines here I've added. So this here I've added, which basically creates a volume amount in the main Docker image, which is the Spark Docker image. So you've got another couple of, if I expand that window, you've got another couple of images there. But in the main image, the Spark image, we've underneath ports, we've added this couple of lines here, which creates a volume, which means that the local directory in which the Docker Compose file resides will be available. The files in there will be available inside this Docker container under this folder here. The RW is read write. I don't think we actually need that. I think that's the default anyway, but no harm. So you can just add this command to your Docker Compose file under ports. Make sure the formatting and the tabs and all that kind of stuff are matching what's already there. OK, so it will just come out of that. And what you need to do is run docker compose up hyphen D hyphen D is just means it will run in detached. You'll get your terminal back. You'll get your prompt back and up is to start the docker compose file. And again, I'm not going to run that now because it's already running. So if I say docker container LS, let me just expand that window slightly. OK, hopefully you can see that we've got three images, uh, three containers, sorry. And this is the main one. This is the one that we're most interested in. OK, that's the master. And these two are the workers. But it's all part of this same Docker Compose file. So this is the one that we tampered with to create the volume. And the other two we didn't really touch. We didn't really edit those. OK, so once you've executed your Docker Compose up hyphen D command that I just showed you a minute ago, you should be able to, once it's finished executing, you should be able to go to localhost. 8018, and you should be able to see the Spark admin UI. OK, and this shows you what the Spark URL is, and you've got a bunch of other stuff here. You can click around and have a play. We won't go into detail about what that stuff is at the moment, but this URL is important, so you want to make a note of that. We're just going to copy that. OK, now the next thing I want to show you is how to get shell access, Spark shell, where you can start to execute queries and that kind of thing in Spark. and. And there's really two ways that we can do that. If we go back to our iTerm window, you can see here that, as I said before, we've got a Spark installation. So we can use the files from there in the bin folder. So let's try that first of all. So let's go into this Spark bin folder. And then you've got various files here and commands and stuff. Again, we won't go into a lot of detail about them, but just to show you. So you can say Spark shell and then the URL that we copied. Oops, that's not the URL that we copied. OK, and then we just hit enter.
Okay, and we're in. My machine took a little while to do that. I sped that up a little bit just because I think it's struggling in this heat. So just to show you what you can do, you've got all kinds of commands that you can run in there. And again, we're not going to go into detail here. Now I'm going to exit out of this by using colon quit. And we're going to use it from the actual Docker container because that means you don't need to download this additional Apache Spark installation. Okay, so we're going to come out of here. I just wanted to show you that just in case you've already got it on your machine and then you don't need to exec into the container. So we'll just go back to our root directory, which is this one here. Okay, now if we run Docker container ls again. Okay, we can get the container ID. So this is the main one and we can get the container ID. So we'll just copy that. So what we're going to do now is actually get a shell inside that container. So we're working as if we're on, on that machine, on that box. So we'll do that by using docker exec. So we can say docker exec minus i minus t, the name of the container and then bin bash, something like that should do. Okay, and now we are in that container. Okay, so now on the local machine, so I'll just open another tab here. So on the local machine, not inside the container, we've got this file called dups.txt. And the reason for the mount is that we wanted to create the mount so that this file is accessible from inside the container. And then we're going to run some queries on it. So we've got some strings on the left, like AA, B, B, C, G, and then A again. So we've got some duplicates here, duplicate keys, I guess you could call them. We're calling them names, duplicate names. And then you've got some numbers along the right. So we're going to try and do some operation on that, but we'll get to that in a second. So now you're inside here in the Docker compose file. If I just cat that again, you can see here that we had mounted the local directory where the Docker compose file is to the test files folder inside that Bitnami container, the Spark container. Okay, so where is that file here? So if we go to CD test files, you can see that that folder is there. And if we say ls, you can see all the files that you could see on my local machine. You can see the same files that you can see here, same files. Okay. So that means that those files are accessible inside the container and we can run operations on this in Spark. So let's go ahead and do that. So let's go back to where we were in the bin directory. We can run Spark shell again, but remember this time we're running inside the Docker container. We don't need to run it locally. And then we paste in the Spark URL. And remember this is the Spark URL that we saw in the browser just here. Okay. So it's the same one. Okay, and we're in. Now, I actually sped that up or cut bits of it out just to speed things up so you don't have to sit and wait while it's loading. It's quite hot here in the UK at the moment, so maybe my machine's struggling or I just need to get a new machine. But either way, we're in now. Um, so I've got some code, which I'm just going to paste in. Probably don't need to worry about it too much unless you're interested or you can go away and experiment yourself. But this is going to allow us to do an operation on... Let me just show you that file again. So what we want to do is to, wherever there's an A, to count the values and sum those up. Um, so basically add them up. So you should expect one at three, three and six and seven. So the value for A should be seven and the value for B should be 11 because you're adding the five to the six. And that's the basic operation we want to do. It's nothing particularly complex. Okay. So first of all, we are going to run some imports. Let's just grab those. Okay. And then let's create a reference to the file. Now you can see dups.txt inside the test files folder that we mounted. And then we grab the SQL context as well. And now we are going to create a class to represent each one of the entries in that duplicates list. Okay. And then we'll map those into a data frame. Oops. Okay, now we will create a temporary table. So now let's paste in our command that does the actual work. Now, you don't need to worry about this too much. This is mainly just for a quick demonstration that the thing's actually working. But basically what we're doing is we're grouping by name. Then we're getting the sum of the values, which is the column on the right. Once we've grouped them, say group by A, B, for example, and then we rename the columns. Name, we just make it uppercase. And you get a column of the sum of the value. We just rename that to sum. And then we say dot show. So let's just execute that and see what happens. Okay, there we have it. There's our result. And the column names look good. And the K 
accounts look good from what I can remember. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. You can see it working. Just to go back to the original file that we had. So the file looked like that there. And you can see the sums have been done, I think, correctly there. So that pretty much wraps that up. So just to summarize what we actually did, we wanted to set up Apache Spark locally on our machine with minimal fuss. So we got a Docker Compose definition from the Bitnami repositories. We started that. We got a Spark shell to connect to the Spark running in Docker from outside of Docker using an installation that we had locally for Apache Spark that we downloaded. But we also exec into the main image and got a Spark shell from there as well. Then we ran some queries and manipulated the input file that we had there to get this grouping and summing result. Okay, so I hope that was useful. If you found it useful, don't forget to like and subscribe for more similar content. And if you have any comments or suggestions or you found it useful, please leave a comment below. Thanks a lot for watching.